Hello, and welcome back to this episode of 8-Bit Unboxing. Now, before we get started, uh, there's a couple things I need to tell you about. So as you probably know, uh, the number of items I'm accepting each month has been getting smaller and smaller. And there's two main reasons for that. Uh, the first main reason, of course, is the amount of space I have keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, but another item that you might not have considered is that the number of items that I actually need is getting smaller as well. Uh, and that's because if you look back a couple of years ago on my website, I had a, a fairly large want list of things that I needed for my show and people keep donating those things to me and that list has shrunk pretty small now. And so the number of things that I actually need is smaller and so there's just not as much that I've been um, accepting in. And uh, as a result of that, um, you might not be seeing these episodes as as often. Uh, in fact, there probably won't be an unboxing episode next month. Uh, I maybe start spacing these two or three months apart. So just word of warning on that. And even this month, I've received quite a few less things than normal. So uh, the video would be kind of short, but I decided to put in a little bit of an extra special thing at the end to uh, help compensate for that a bit. So be sure you stick around to watch that. The first package of the month comes from Travis Ormandy. Hmm. There's two bubble wrap boxes that say Seiko on them. Okay, uh, this is neat looking, but I have no idea what it is. It has a printer and a keyboard. And what is this? Uh, yes, it's a watch. Uh, I remember this conversation now. Uh, this is basically a computer and a watch. It's a full dot matrix display and appears to have a 10 column by 4 line display. And you place the watch in here and you can program it or something using this keyboard. Well, this will have to be explored more fully in a later video, so uh, thank you Travis for such a neat donation. Moving on, the next box is from Ben Kritz. And here's a little note. And it looks like what we have here are some Atari 2600 cartridges. I'm always amazed that people send me these because I only accept ones I don't have and I'm getting to the point where I think I have most all of them, but uh, anyway, these are definitely ones I did not have. So. Um, Thank you, Ben. Next up, we have a little package here from the Netherlands. This is from Wesley Thiems. And it looks like the post office already started the process of opening it. Uh, let's finish the job. Well, I don't want to bend whatever that is, so uh, let's use some scissors. And so, uh, it looks like he sent me some Super Nintendo cartridges. Now, this is one system that I have very few cartridges for, so almost anything somebody sends me I probably won't have. And it appears these came with manuals too, so uh, that's always nice. Uh, thank you, Wesley. Okay, this has to be one of the most bizarre packages I've ever received. It's basically a giant heavy trunk with wheels on it. I was actually a bit nervous wheeling this into my house. This is from Hazlitt, and uh, it cost a whopping $82 to ship it to me. And no wonder, being it's almost 60 pounds. Alright, well, um, let's see what we have in here. Well, there's a note here, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Ah, uh, this explains it. There's more of the note down here. So yeah, now it makes more sense. So long story short, this comes from Jill, whose husband watches my show from Afghanistan, but I'm not too clear on where this stuff actually came from. So I guess I should start pulling some of this stuff out of here and figuring out what is what. It looks like this is the main attraction. It's a K-Pro 2000 laptop. I remember the email conversation on this now, and uh, I'm excited to play with this. Um, this thing is heavy. It's built like a tank. Uh, there was actually two of them in here, but uh, only one is working. These things are kind of interesting as the keyboard pops out like this, and uh, the floppy drive pops out like this. Um, in this box here, there are piles of MS-DOS games, both originals and copies, on different sizes of discs. I'll have to sort through that later. And uh, these are docking stations for the laptops, and they appear to have full-size card slots in them as well. But that's where this takes an interesting turn for me. Uh, these machines seem to run MS-DOS. I was thinking this would be a CPM machine like the other K-Pro Luggables, but it isn't. So I guess I have another machine to test Planet X3 on. Uh, the other machine here has a larger screen, but uh, it's missing a lot of pieces and it's dead as a doornail. Anyway, uh, a big thanks to the Hazlets for sending this. Moving along, the next package is from Enrique Mata. Looks like we have a note. And what we have here are some more TI-99 games. And much like the Atari games, I keep thinking I have them all, but apparently I don't. <laughs> Alright, uh, thank you Enrique. 
Next up we have a cube shaped box from C. Reynolds. Ok, uh, looks like there are several items in here. Uh, the first one is this. Uh, it looks like an 8-track tape. Ok, it is an 8-track tape, but it appears to be blank as if it were designed for you to record on it yourself. I'm not familiar with any recorders for these tapes. Uh, maybe I'd better ask Techmode about that. <laughs> Fascinating. This next bag appears to contain several other unopened examples of different videotape formats. I can put these in my museum next to my unopened Betamax tape. Here's Commodore 128 system discs. I already had a few sets of these. And a manual to a 1750 RAM expander. Yeah, so uh, that's the main attraction here. So I already had a 1764 RAM expander, but it's technically for the Commodore 64. This version is meant for the Commodore 128. So um, thank you very much for that. Uh, this will help with my Commodore history series. Ok, here's a long box without a name on it. But uh, I found out later this was from Naoki Saito. Uh, there appears to be a keyboard in here. Ah uh, yes, I remember this conversation now. This is a Yamaha DX100. And uh, I get a lot of crazy offers for rare or expensive things and I usually take them with a grain of salt because 90% of the time uh, the items never actually show up. And uh, this is another one that I didn't think would actually show up, but it did. Now, I hope I can demonstrate this to you eventually, but the trouble is, it's broken. But uh, based on the symptoms described, I'm hoping maybe I can fix it. We'll see. Um, ok, uh, thank you Naoki. Next up we have an apparently very fragile box. Although sometimes I think putting that wording on the box has the opposite effect. Looks like there's a craft joystick inside. It appears to have a Commodore slash Atari connector. But uh, I've never actually seen this model for those systems. Here's a note on the box. Ok, uh, so this is something that's been on my want list for a while. It's a Heroid, but uh, was also sold under the brands of Omnibot and Radio Shack sold it as the Roby Senior. Now he didn't have the remote control to this, but uh, somebody else had offered to ship me a remote a few months ago. But I turned them down as I had no robot to use it with. However, I contacted him back and he says he's sending the remote control. So hopefully I'll have that in the next month's unboxing video and I'll have a complete unit. Now unfortunately this guy is in serious need of repair and cleaning. The arms appear broken and the whole thing needs some retrobrite. And here's the tape deck. This thing could play music cassettes, but it could also store data on a cassette tape with instructions on how to do things. Anyway, I hope I'm able to get this thing working again. Uh, stay tuned for a future episode. Next up is a small package. I think this is from Germany. Not sure who sent it. Ok, uh, this is a Viduzels cartridge for the Commodore 64. This is a neat little video jigsaw puzzle game. Um, I later found out this is from Herald out of Hamburg, Germany. So uh, thank you very much. And here's another package where I'm not sure who it's from. It appears to be from Berlin, Germany. And inside is a Sonic the Hedgehog cartridge. Oddly enough, this looks like it's for the Master System and I didn't even know this game was available for that system. Yeah, in fact this little sticker, probably from the reseller, says it's for the Master System. I'll be interested to check this out. Uh, thank you. Ok, and that about wraps it up for all the donations for April. Uh, now I said there would be something special at the end and so here we are. So um, what I wanted to do is, uh, if, you, if I look back, I've been doing the unboxing uh, videos for about a year. I think it's 13 months. but. I just got to thinking about it, I'm like, well, you know, to commemorate that, I should do like a top 10 most awesome donations um, that I've received over the last year, or at least since I've been doing the, the videos. And I actually had a really hard time narrowing down just 10 items because I received a lot of cool stuff. In fact, I received over 200 donations over the last year. Alright, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the criteria that I use to judge these top 10. Um, obviously, uh, one of the things was how valuable was the item. Uh, but also another thing was um, how rare is the item, like how hard would have been for me to get one if I had tried to go out and find one of these by myself. Uh, the third criteria was of course um, what condition was the item in. And the fourth criteria was how useful was the item to me. I mean just because something is expensive and rare doesn't necessarily mean it's all that useful to me in a video. So 
Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention that I struggled with a lot. So there were two or three different people that sent me like really big boxes of stuff. And there were like all of these really cool items shoved into this one box. And I struggled to decide if that was considered one donation or multiple donations by the same person. And what I ultimately decided is I wanted this top 10 list to be uh, just individual things uh, rather than groups of things. And <laughs> so keeping that in mind, uh, let's get started. Starting with number 10, I'm going to go with the boxed Timex Sinclair 2068. And yes, you're definitely going to see this in an upcoming series about the Sinclair units. Moving on to number 9, I picked the TRS-80 Color Computer 3. Uh, this was actually the last piece of the puzzle I needed to make a video series on the whole Coco line of computers, so you'll be seeing this again. Number 8 is a keyboard, and while I've received some pretty cool keyboard donations, I think this Yamaha DX100 is actually the most awesome. In fact, I'm almost done with the repair video on this, so you'll be seeing that in a few days. Number 7, the TRS-80 Model 1. And while the power supply needs recapping, this is definitely a computer you'll be seeing again. Number 6 is the IBM PC Junior. I'm planning a whole series on the PC Junior and Tandy 1000 machines, so expect to see this again. Number 5 is the Commodore 1551 disk drive. Now, these are really hard to find and I was thrilled to receive this one and you'll be seeing this again in two different future episodes. Number 4 is the Amiga 600. And you'll be seeing this around episode 7 or 8 of Commodore History once I start getting into the Amiga line of computers. Number 3 is the Bell & Howell, or Darth Vader Apple II. I'm actually planning a restoration of this computer, however I'm planning to bring this with me to Maker Faire in November, where hopefully some experts are going to help me out with this, so you'll be seeing this around the end of the year. Number 2 is the Commodore Pet, and while I've already shown it in several videos, don't be surprised if it pops up again here or there. And can anyone guess what I picked for number 1? If you guessed the Commodore Max machine, you guessed right. You'll actually be seeing this featured in a revised episode of Commodore History in just a week or so, and it will probably make a few appearances in other videos. Alright, and that about wraps up this video, so I hope you guys liked this, and I did want to mention that I know last month um, doesn't seem like I produced a lot of content, that's because a lot of the projects I was working on ended up being delayed, waiting for parts and all kinds of stuff, so um, I'm hoping uh, you'll actually see more content this month uh, than normal because uh, many of those videos I'm almost done with. So um, anyway, uh, stick around for the next episode and thanks for watching.